welcome to to me. Hello and good morning and welcome to yet another edition of The Conversation. Now, the honest truth is I wasn't supposed to do this. So I'm going to do the right thing by being a gentleman and allowing the lady to go first. Good morning, Africa. It's another edition of The Conversation here on TOS TV Network, your digital affairs for an African network. I am Adeso LC. And I am. Cammy and John. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this morning and without wasting much time, um, Adeswa, lead us into uh, developments in Africa. Okay, so the first one, ah, it's about Nigerian soldiers killed by um, pursuing jihadists. So four soldiers were killed on Monday in Niger and eight others seriously injured after an explosion mm -hmm. at an artisanal mine in the southeastern part of the country near the border with Nigeria. According to Niger's Minister of Defense, the soldiers were pursuing jihadists who had attacked Chetima Wango military post in the southeastern region of Defa on Sunday. At least eight soldiers were killed when the post was targeted on 7th March last year, 2019. An attack in the same locality killed seven Nigerian soldiers. That's quite sad for us, though, is it? They're actually Nigerian, not Nigerians. Oh, Pardon me, <laughs> Nijay, not, 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 oh, oh. That, oh, people oh, make that mistake, oh, it's oh. common, um, not just in Africa, but even in the world, when they yeah. see Niger, the, for people who are very familiar with Nigeria, yeah. the first thing that comes over, it must be Nigeria. Nigeria. So, I thought it was Nigeria. Uh, it's Nigerian. Do you speak French? A little. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, so on the second story, Uganda is still on the Uganda elections. Internet has finally been uh, not necessarily restored, uh, but social media has been blocked. So that's why I said internet has not necessarily been restored because I, I prefer to use internet for social media. So Ugandans are celebrating the resumption of internet services after a shutdown was imposed ahead of last week's election. However, social media platforms remain blocked and are only accessible using virtual private networks. That's the VPN. President Yoweri Museveni, who won an unprecedented sixth term in office, had accused the platforms of being biased. Bobby Wine, presidential candidate for the opposition National Unity Platform, alleged the poll was marred by fraud. The party spokesperson, Joel Senyonyi, accused Mr. Museveni of shutting down the internet to prevent them from sharing evidence of fraud. He said that the party was in the process of co collecting election results firms that have evidence of irregularities. I think Bobby, Bobby Wine is not going to back down on this one. Um, if I were Bobby Wine, I wouldn't back down. I mean, um, my only crime or uh, offense is that I decided to run for presidency. presidency. So um, I wouldn't give up that dream, even if I, I mean, I can tell you people who have suffered something close to what Bobby Wine. Okay. George Oponwea, the current president yes. of Liberia, yes. he lost several attempts at being president, president. but he, he remained persistent and consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, let's not forget, if you go to the Western Hemisphere, uh, it's, a, it's uh, one that any historical a, a history student knows, mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln. Yes. You know, yes. so if you have a vision, you believe in in that vision and you're driven by that vision mm -hmm. um, the only thing is to remain consistent and persistent okay yeah. All right, just take us on the next series. well staying with Uganda um, the United States Department has called for independent credible impartial uh, thorough investigations into many credible reports of irregularities in Uganda's general elections last week now long-term leader Yoweri Museveni was reelected uh, re-elected for a sixth term amid accusations of va uh, vote fraud by his main rival Bobby Wine the president said the poll could be the most cheating free in the history of African na of the African nation. In a statement, the U.S. State Department said those found culpable of election ir irregularities should be accountable. Um, I found that statement quite amusing. Yes, uh, most 
uh, fraud free, in, <laughs> you know, in the history. Well, anyway, we'll, we will keep our ears to the ground and such like beamed on Uganda because I, I have a my, let me put it this way, my spider sense mm. is tingling that there will be a lot more as far. And uh, I, I, just in case you missed it, Museveni had an exclusive interview with uh, uh, CNN's Aman Paul, and it was very interesting, the kind of responses uh, President Yoweri Museveni gave to the uh, questions of um, Christy Aman Paul. You should, you should watch that interview, and you will know that there's a lot in the offering as far as uh, the fallouts of you. Uganda's recently held presidential elections. Now, moving away from Uganda to the Central African Republic, where the Constitutional Court in the CAR has confirmed the outright victory of Faustin Ascharge Taudera in last month's election with 53.1% of votes cast against nearest challenger Aniset Georges uh, Dologuele. Uh, who had 21.69%. Now, the proclamation of uh, Taudera's win came despite reports of a poor voter turnout and the loss of much of the country to rebel fractions. Six of the main rebel groups have allied and say they will match onto the capital, Bangu. Mm -hmm. Now, there was an attack on its suburbs uh, late last week, and rebels briefly, briefly seized control of uh, Ban Bangaso to the east, not far from Bangu, uh, before withdrawing following an ult uh, ultimatum from the United Nations peacekeeping force. Of course, um, for if my uh, memory serves me right, for about three years or more now, the Central African Republic has been under the watchful eye of the United Nations Peacekeeping Force. Okay. On to the next one, we're going to be going to Tunisia for this one. The Tunisian president has urged protesters to desist from vandalizing private and public properties. Kai Said met with residents of Etan Mahaman City on Monday. It comes after a fourth consecutive day of protest across the country. Protesters are battling against social and economic crisis. Through you, I want to speak to all the Tunisian people. I know the state of poverty, and I also know who is exploiting your poverty. Don't let anyone exploit your misery. Don't attack private or public property. We live today because of moral values and not because of theft or looting. This sort of reminds me of what happened in Nigeria with the NSAS protests and everything. Sounds pretty similar. People are tired and just want to change, and then it just turns into chaos. Basically, it's a clear indication that young people across Africa, Africa yeah. don't just want to be seen, but they also want to be heard. heard. Yeah. And they want to be given their pride of place as far as the scheme of things mm -hmm. is concerned. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I do agree that young people have come of age. I have, during my very, very youthful days, I'm still a young man, but, <laughs> you know, okay. uh, had to also be able to fight to be heard mm -hmm. you know it, you know it, it, it's it seems to be a predominant um thing in africa mm -hmm. and um uh in the 22nd 21st 22nd century i think it's uh, one trend that has to change has to change okay yeah. and until the central african republic the constitutional court in the central african republic has confirmed the outright victory of forcing our change Tordera in last month's election um, okay, I think you already took that story. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, so uh, we're going to be going to, with less than three months to go before the presidential election in Benin, President Patrice Talon opened the election campaign with an announcement of his candidacy for a second term, supposedly in the spirit of strengthening good governance. Patris Talon, who had decided to serve a single term, is finally a candidate in the next presidential election on 11th April 2021. Keep up the momentum. I will continue to devote my energy to this, said the Beninese president. A surprise for some in light of the president's declaration of wanting to serve a single term at the time of his election in 2016. But not so much for opposition camps who had no doubt that the president will file a candidacy bid as they believe that he has had an authoritarian hold on the nation since it came to power. Now, my, my, I have a question. Why do African leaders always want to cling to power even when they make it clear like I, I don't want to do a second term 
I, I just want to come in and make some changes and leave. But after the first term, they always want to go for the second term and then the third term if possible. You want the honest truth? Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. The, because we do not understand the true meaning and the concept of what leadership means. Mm. Uh, leadership means service. And like everything in life, it has a beginning and an okay, end. Yes. The only thing about consistent service through life is the fact that if you have served well, mm -hmm. people will continue to crave for you to serve, mm -hmm. but in different capacities mm -hmm. at different times. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, most quote and unquote so-called leaders across Africa are yet to comprehend, yet to fully understand that word called leadership. leadership. I hope there comes a time when we don't get to have to experience all of this. What have you known? I think we should take a second. All right. We'll take a quick breather. And uh, when we come back, um, we will quickly go into um, latest developments as far as COVID-19. Uh, of course, the world is currently undergoing this second wave, mm. um, variant strands found across the world. So um, here are the latest updates uh, in just a moment. DOS TV Network mobile app is now available. You can now catch up on our breaking news, stream our programs live. Watch out for the latest update on sports and politics as they unfold. You can also get notifications for our upcoming programs and events. All these on our TOS TV Network mobile app. Available on Apple Store and Google Play Store. TOS TV News from Africa by Africans. Being a journalist means in-depth analysis that unravels hidden truths, that questions the status quo and fact-checks government. These criminal elements hiding under the cloak of surveillance contractors are the APC elements. Do you have facts to prove that? that? Being a journalist means waking up every day with a burning desire for peace, equity and justice for all citizens. We're being told that the choice you have is to take the lesser of two evils. It means patriotism, where the prison of objectivity and accountability. It means giving my platform to the masses to discuss issues that matter to them. Some of them, if they bring budget and the budget, they lose. Some of them sleep. They're going to ask how much you are on. I have it. Thereby shaping government policies and laws. My name is Osasu Ignatia, and I am the People's Journalist. Welcome back. If you're just joining, it's still the conversation on TOS TV Network, and that was um, a COVID-19 update. Moving on, we're going to be moving straight into the newspaper headlines for the morning, starting with the Nigerian Tribune. Um, the first headline is on COVID-19. It says, Lagos oxygen demand rises to 350 cylinders per day. And under that, as Sanwo says, 24,000 students yet to report in public schools. Edo deploys 200 policemen to enforce use of face masks. Kano directs civil servants to stay at home, imposes fresh ban on event centers. Nigeria has capacity to store 400,000 doses of Pfizer vaccines. Uh, says the federal government and to the right on that we have gunmen ab abduct don kill son in zaria under that or you to pay or shoot eight billion naira for now tech asset sharing and the senate won't fight Buhari to please anyone says um, lawan and then to the anambra polls anambra government poll holds november 6th and another um, very glaring headline there says, Seven day ultimatum. Continue your dialogue with Fulani communities. Presidency tells Akiri Dolu, says you are at least expected to unilaterally oust thousands of heathers. No going back. Legal users to forest must re register with government, says the Undo state government. Akiri Dolu acted responsibly. A is saying that. 
gave ultimatum to help herders to leave forest reserves in Yoruba land, YCE tells Southwest governments. And under that, armed robbery in oil declined by 48% in 2020. And then on top of that, to the left, we have Pope appoints Kuka as member dicastry for the promotion of human integral development. In the middle, we have three dead, five vehicles burnt as tanker explodes in Abelkuta. Government bans tankers, articulated vehicles from plying Ogun bridges. I think that's a step in the right direction, if you ask me. Mm, mm. Very, very interesting uh, developments on uh, the front page of the Tribune. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take you on uh, the Daily Independent. That's a um, quite interesting front page as far as the Daily Independent is concerned. I'm starting with at the top of the Daily Independent with this um, um, headline: Nigeria's cashew industry loses 40 billion naira to COVID-19. Mm. Nigeria cashew industry loses 40 billion naira to uh, COVID-19. Uh, this is just one of several developments or fallouts as a result of um, the co coronavirus pandemic that has ravaged the world since um, <laughs> 20, 2020. 2020 yeah. You know, and um, the, the economies are seriously battered. Uh, just yes, yesterday I came across a story where the president of Tanzania mm -hmm. is telling farmers to step up that this just might be an opportunity for African farmers to be able to feed the world be yes. because as a result of COVID-19. Now still staying with developments on the daily independent, uh, you have this um, second headline also at the top of the daily independent, presidency to Akere Dolu, you can't order herders to vacate Ondo forest. Mm. Presidency to Akere Dolu, you can't order herders to vacate Ondo forest. And then um, let's look at um, the, in front of, on the front page of the Daily Independent is the picture of the um, uh, carnage, uh, let me use that word, as a result of the uh, tanker that exploded okay, yeah. on Kuto Bridge in Abelkuta, uh, Ogun State, Southwest Nigeria. Now, in, 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 uh, if my calculations are right, in the last three to four months, there, is, there has hardly been a month that we haven't witnessed uh, 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 tankers laden with PMS, that's uh, premium motor spirit, petrol, um, exploding or, you know, uh, just falling you know uh, mm -hmm. yeah and um in this case i understand as of yesterday when the report broke out that one life was lost but i can tell you um the damage that has been done is in tunes of millions as a result of uh, that tanker explosion well still on the front page of the daily independent you have the gaping headline foreign bandits invading nigeria hacking havoc in Oyo, uh, that's that one, and that it has been a reoccurring uh, report in the last couple of days, especially uh, from uh, the uh, leader of the Amoteko. Amo Amo yeah, because um, they have had several encounters uh, with some of these bandits, and they claim um, some of them speak French. So the ten, the, the assumption would be that some of them Quite definitely non -Nigerians. aren't Nigerians. Yes. All right, more headlines on the front page of the Daily Independent. Uh, at the bottom of the uh, photograph of the explosion, you have COVID-19. Nigeria to receive 100,000 doses of vaccines in two weeks. 100,000 uh, doses of vaccines in two weeks. Uh, well, um, I have my. <laughs> I have my. <laughs> I was wondering why you didn't want to say that. But okay. <laughs> I have my thoughts, you know, about that. Well, still looking at other developments on the front page of the Daily Independent, you have GSM operators collect 47.8 million national ID numbers. Mm -hmm ahead of NOC deadline, that is uh, uh, ahead of NCC uh, deadline. And then federal government raises 2.36 trillion Naira from capital markets in 2020. And finally, 
three die, six bombs in Ogutanka explosion. I did, did say as of yesterday, yes. yeah, it, they said one, but now details have emerged that three people died, six bombs in Ogutanka explosion. Okay. Very unfortunate very, incident very unfortunate. and very, very avoidable. Yes, totally avoidable. Moving on to the Daily Sun. Ah, the very, very glaring headline on that one is still on the COVID-19. It says COVID-19 vaccines are meant to kill us. Mm. Co Cogistic governors would <laughs> say that. Federal government considers vaccine outside Pfizer, bio and tech, laments high storage cost. And another headline says, why we open schools despite coronavirus spike? The governor of Lagos State, Babajide Samwudu, is the one saying that. If you want to know why schools open in Lagos State, you have to get yourself a copy of the Sun newspaper. And then INEC fixes Anambra Guba election for November 6th. Party primary is slated for June and July. And then the very, you know, tiny headline summer. This is this one. Yes, at the bottom. This one is on the inauguration of um, Joe Biden as U.S. president. It says U.S. New era as Biden assumes office today. Many controversies of Trump. Mm, that would be very interesting. NIN SIM registration continues till February 9, NCC. It, it's good to see that they actually, you know, have extended. No, I, the, the, I, I told you yesterday. <laughs> they, you they they would extend. To, yeah. I mean, because, I mean, um, you, you want, if, I don't have the figures, mm -hmm. but out of a population of, well over 200 million, million yes. uh, the assumption will be at least you have about 65% to 70% of that population having access to mobile phones. Mm -hmm. So you would need to create a timeline, a sustainable timeline mm -hmm. for that volume to be able to, you know, um, do their registration, mm -hmm. get their name number, mm -hmm. and also uh, link their SIMs mm -hmm. or their uh, mobile lines yeah, to, mobile line. to yeah. the name number. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the last headline for on the Daily Sun says, Pope Francis appoints Kuka advisor on human development. That is quite interesting. I think yesterday when you, when you gave us this as breaking news, I was kind of, that happened. But yeah, it's, it's actually interesting to see that, that Well, happened. it's very good. And it's coming at a time that uh, Matthew Cook, uh, Bishop Matthew Kuka, mm -hmm. who is the current uh, bishop for the Sokoto Sokoto, Diocese, yeah. um, has been in the news. Um, we, you know, we belong to the controversial, controversial. I was the controversial for you. club. <laughs> so we, we are always in the news, highly misunderstood, highly misrepresented. Mm -hmm. But um, congratulations, Bishop Kuka. Mm -hmm. uh, it means the world recognizes your contributions to humanity. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, just before we leave the newspaper review, just to give you uh, the front page of what's happening on the Daily Trust. Mm -hmm. A big gaping headline as far as the Daily Trust is concerned. And of course, um, across Nigeria today, on all the national dailies, you will find a picture of the tanker explosion on Kuto Bridge in Abel Kuta, Southwest Nigeria. Uh, it's also evident on the Daily Trust. But this gaping headline, 12.3 million subscribers await SIM linkage with NIN. Mm. Interesting. And of course, we just told you that um, uh, the registration deadline has been extended to February 9th. Nine, yeah. yeah. All right. Under that headline, two riders um, as 4.78 million phone users cleared. Uh, FG urged to limit mobile lines possession to two. Oh. Now, uh, where are the lawyers in the house? <laughs> Can I, I, they do that, I, though? I mean, I, should the government have the prerogative to decide how many phone lines you actually have? Mm -hmm. you know, well, uh, I want to see what the, how the lawyers react to this. Mm -hmm. And then, um, Akeri Dolu quits order to herdsmen inflammatory that's from the presidency that's at the top left side of the daily trust and uh, us us everything you need to know about biden's inauguration today hmm. right there on the daily trust and then finally 18th daily trust dialogue holds tomorrow that's an interesting event mm -hmm. and and just before I leave the Daily Trust, at the bottom, traders count losses after Sokoto market in Fenno. Unfortunate incident uh, right there from, with the Sokoto in Fenno. So 
I would urge you uh, to get a copy of any of this dailies if you're interested in getting the details of any of the headlines we have given you this morning on the conversation. Up next is our big story. And um, let me say this. It's a double header. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Today, we have a new man sitting in the, they call it the castle, actually. <laughs> but, you know, popularly known as, or let me put it this way, a.k.a. The White, the House. White House. Yes. So, um, the big story uh, on Joe Biden's inauguration and then, of course, COVID-19. Still very much in the picture as we continue to look at the resumption of schools across Nigeria and across most parts of Africa. Do stay with us. An election the world looks forward to, the United States of America election, an election that stirred lots of controversies. Amidst the controversies, Donald Trump joined a select group of presidents who served only one presidential term in office. He became the 45th president of the United States of America in 2016 when he defeated Hillary Clinton to succeed Barack Obama. But his hopes of another four years in power have been dashed by Democratic candidate Joe Biden and running mate Kamala Harris. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are being sworn in today, 20th January 2021. It is well known that former President Trump's administration paid little or no attention to Nigeria and Africa at large. Our hopes are high, as Joe Biden has said, he will reverse some of Trump's policies, especially the travel ban on Nigeria and other countries. Can we say that the Joe Biden and Kamala Harris administration? There you have it. The first black woman mm -hmm. of uh, African Asian descent mm -hmm. to become vice president of the United States of America, Kamala Harris. And um, most importantly, Joe Biden. Um, if you ever heard of a story of a man who has been through, who has seen it all, experienced it all, Joe Biden is the man. Mm. Um, when he became U.S. Senator, he lost his wife. Oh. You know, he almost gave up. At a point when he first ran for the office of president, which he didn't win, and uh, he lost his son. Mm -hmm. You know, every time I look at Joe Biden, I see a man who, um, let me put it this way, um, his struggle is his story, mm -hmm. and his story is his superpower. And quite relatable to... to Very to relatable. So right now, the world, the big question is, what will Joe Biden do to heal the world after four years of mm. Donald Trump? I think, I think a, lot, a lot of Africans are more interested in what he's tenure of what Joe Biden being president is going to do for Africa and what's going to spell for Africa. Because mm. quite a lot of Africans actually have um, high expectations for Joe Biden because, you know, Trump wasn't, you know, so much, you know, he didn't so much tilt to um, favor Africa, especially in terms of foreign policy and stuff like that. And a lot of people are expecting Joe Biden to, to, be, to do it differently. But I personally think that, you know, Joe Biden will be different from Trump as Obama was different from um, Judge Bush. But I don't think in terms of foreign policy, he's going to do so much. He's going to do, there's going to be any change. Especially, when, I think we're forgetting that America is a little bit troubled and unstable at this point, And it's going to require much of his attention. So Africa might be on autopilot as, as it is. Well, Africa needs to take its own destiny into its own hands, mm -hmm. um, but I can guarantee that America-Africa relations will slightly be enhanced okay. under Joe Biden. Don't forget, um, Joe Biden, before being inaugurated into office, has a number of Africans and African-Americans mm -hmm. in his cabinet, mm -hmm. and I'm proud to say about four or five Nigerians are part of that list. Mm -hmm. uh, so it gives you an idea that um, Joe Biden does have a heart for Africa. Mm -hmm. Some people would say because he was vice president to Barack Obama, yeah. who is uh, African-American, of course, it's, it's well known he's 
half Kenyan, <laughs> you know, and all of that. And because of the Obama influence, there is a likelihood that Joe Biden will give some attention uh, to, to Africa. Africa. Okay. But I did tell you that it was uh, it's going to be a double header big story on this edition of the conversation, and the fact that we will continue to look at um, um, the resumption of schools under the second wave of COVID-19. So without much ado, let's get some reactions of Nigerians uh, as school resumed Monday mm -hmm. uh, across Nigeria. And uh, of course, parents are varied of parents. There are parents who still haven't released their children to go back to school because of the fear of COVID-19. Yes, to me, I feel it's actually the right time. Because, like me now, I'm in my final year. I meant to have graduated since last year. But because of this corona, it's just locked down everywhere. So now that schools has resumed, and if they'll be able to follow government's precaution, I think it's actually the right time for them to open. Okay, um, considering um, um, the, the current um, situation which we find ourselves, I as a person, it's 75% sure that our schools are not ready for resumptions uh, for me i think uh, government has made the biggest mistake because uh, if you if you watch the news you see that the case continue increasing every time every day by day so i think they should have waited a little until we have uh, reduced in cases before schools will resume other countries why this lockdown of covid have been on they have been e-learning, online learning, and so on. And that cannot actually make this, the, the school activities to be stagnant. But considering this country we have now, all these things are not being provided. So if schools continue to be under lock and key, you know that education in this country will definitely suffer. Make sure that everybody is Why ready. For example, in my school, Funtaj International School, we had to um, send every teacher, every staff of the school for the COVID test. And everybody who turned out negative was certified fit to resume duties. And we've not had any positive case yet. But even if we do, we'll find a way to isolate them and get them treated before they join the workforce. And we gave the same directives to our parents and the children, and they are all complying. At this point, children's education should be top priority. Extending resumption is not going to send COVID away. It's only going to make things worse. Mm. That's my candid opinion. So, um, so far, uh, since the beginning of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, has any of your students or teachers actually tested positive? Um, none that I know of. Of course, there may be cases. Of, uh, of people who have tested positive. We can't rule that out because it's a large community. But anybody who we know has a positive result, we have placed policies in place that they will use. Immediately, they'll have to be quarantined, they'll have to receive treatment, and they'll have to test negative before they resume. We've, there has been no reported case for now, and we hope it continues that way. Mm. But we cannot rule out the fact that um, COVID-19 is the reality, is the norm, is the norm of this millennium and we have to live with it, even with the second wave of the virus. All right, for those of you who probably were wondering, where's Stephanie Odia? That was Stephanie Odia. <laughs> Stephanie interviewing uh, one of uh, uh, the respondents there, uh, um, uh, uh, an administrator with Lafarge, and, uh, a private school in Abuja, the capital city of Nigeria. She also gave some insight into what private schools are putting in place uh, uh, ahead of the resumption. Of course, schools resumed on Monday. Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, students are back, but not in their numbers that I can tell you. Mm -hmm. So, um, if you were a parent and um, it hit you, I, I, I know that I know that expression, right? <laughs> now, and they say, hey, school is resuming on Monday. Uh, what would be the first thing that would come to your head? Would you be quick to want to get the kids ready for school? Uh, especially with all that's happening? It's a two-way thing. I, I, I would want to get the kids out of the house because 
at this time it, it's because i had my niece and my nephew at home and i know how troublesome it was especially you know with the online schooling and everything i was wanting to get them to school but then again there's the fear of you know are safety. they safe and stuff like that so it, i have to try to find a balance you know between those two yeah. all right joining us uh, to further discuss the subject matter is a journalist and media entrepreneur uh from port hackett south south nigeria um in the person of um chioma is in waffle chioma it's nice to have you join us this morning yes good morning thank you how are you today very well thank you all right chairman let's let's get into it uh, do you think the government's decision to go ahead with school resumption and miss the second wave of COVID-19 uh, is the right thing to do at this time um, we've been following the COVID-19 situation mm -hmm. for a while now and with the knowledge I've come to have of it I would say it was a good move. Okay. A good move because it's come to stay. The virus has come to stay. It's not going anywhere, which is why we do not have a treatment yet, whether we have a vaccine. And while we're working to get the vaccine, I'm locking down or shutting down or shutting down the economy generally. It's not going to solve the problem. It's not a strategy for a pandemic of this nature. And I, am, I must say that um, the government... I, I've noticed, I've come to realize it and are now making steps to rather learn how to live with it. And that's why the schools are open. Mm. And um, what I think is for efforts to be made for schools to learn how to protect the children while in school, get them used to washing their hands, get them used to using hand sanitizer, get them used to being comfortable with uh, face masks on. And even hearing the teacher with the face mask on, those are the efforts that need to be made right now. But opening schools, that's a good move. And I say, yes, yeah, we cannot continue to leave our economy cashed open because COVID-19 is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Right. Chioma, I'm, I'm happy you said that, that there's a need for the kids and virtually everyone uh, to begin to get used to the new normal of wearing face masks, uh, constantly washing your hands, having hand sanitizer, uh, socially distancing and all of that. But the question still remains that has enough been done to, con to educate, continually orientate and reorientate the, the public at all levels uh, about this new normal uh, as regards to COVID-19? Not enough has been done. And, uh, and that's because only one part of the people are doing it. The media is doing their best, the government is doing their best, but the people, the ordinary Nigerians, the distrust, the initial distrust they have of their government is affecting the way they receive the, the message of COVID-19 and what they should do with it. And um, that's another thing that the government needs to really focus on. There's a lot of distrust and it's not, it's not looking good anymore. The second wave wouldn't have happened if we all believe that yes, COVID-19 is real, mm. we need to protect ourselves, and this is what we need to do to protect ourselves. And so it calls for a change of strategy for the government. Mm. And not just the government, for every stakeholder, apart from the Nigerian people, every person that calls themselves leaders, from managers and offices to um, owner of businesses mm. or um, traditional rulers now. So if, if they can get on board and play a role, including influencers, you know, play a role in letting people, I like uh, what the comedian um, Ali Baba did recently when he left the isolation center, yeah. he made it known that, see, look, and he shared his own experience. Yeah. So we have more and more people come share their experience, because if more and more people do that, mm -hmm. because most people keep saying, oh, I don't know anyone that's been hit with COVID-19, this thing is not real. But if they begin to learn that people are getting down with this thing, but they are hiding it. They are not saying it because everyone is afraid of being discriminated against. So if we can have more people come out and not see this as a life sentence or be afraid of discrimination anymore, I believe that more people will come to learn that this is real. And uh, of course, the media as well. It's time we pay regular visits to isolation centers and let people get in touch with the reality of how shortage of oxygen is affecting the fight against COVID-19. Mm. And a lot of all that kind of reality stories okay. need help. But the strategy should focus on 
getting people to believe that this thing is in Nigeria because a lot of our population do not. Okay, um, let, let's talk about the education sector for a bit because you know we're talking about schools reopening and stuff like that. I do know that when um, COVID-19 hit, we weren't ready, especially the educational sector in Nigeria because we had to you know, adopt technology and stuff like that and, and homeschooling. The country wasn't ready. So what impact would you say that COVID-19 had or has had on the educational sector in Nigeria, both negative and positive? Hmm. Well, okay, let me begin with the positive. Okay. Uh, it's morning, right? So let's begin with the positive. <laughs> okay. Yes. I would say that a lot of schools had thought that online learning or virtual learning wasn't going to work mm -hmm. or wasn't going to, you know, wasn't going to be for them. Oh, please. But a lot of schools had to resort to online learning, and a lot of kids saw computers for the first time. A lot of kids, you know, some people at home, their parents won't let them touch the computer. Mm -hmm. But this time around, they were allowed to not just touch the computer, hold the mouse, and interact with their teachers using the same computer that daddy would say, don't touch it. Mm. Often. So that's the good side of it. And I, I hope that schools capitalize on it and don't just... Now that we've gone back to schools, we now switch back to the old ways of doing things. I think it's okay if we match them so that way kids spend less time in school um, and um, they still use the online, so a combination of some sort. Mm -hmm. So ICT needs to be inculcated in education sector, more of it. That's the good side. Now, mm -hmm. the bad side is that more children are out of school. Before now, Nigeria had a disturbing number of children that were out of school. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that we have more and more people that are not going to school at all. Even the online learning, they are not experiencing anything like that. Mm -hmm. And their parents are saying, I beg, I don't know what they are saying, but stay home first. And uh, that's a concern. Even the UNICEF had acknowledged that it's from a concern, not just for Nigeria, for a lot of other countries that um, have cut down school. Okay, so what do you think, before we let you go, what do you think can be done about the number of out-of-school children that we have in Nigeria? Because I, I, you spoke about more, more of children being out of school. In, in one minute, what do you think can be done about that? Yes, I think, uh, I think this is a time that we need to be innovative. We need to um, think outside the box. And one of them is that um, education should go beyond the classroom. Okay. Uh, non-governmental organizations and even CSR of companies should begin to take different shapes, including teaching children that are not able to go to school. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that can help. Thank you so much, Shama, for making our time to be with us. We really appreciate your contribution. And um, uh, we hope that next time when we call on you, you will oblige us with your presence. Uh, sure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. All right, we've been talking with um, uh, a, a, a journalist and media entrepreneur um, all the way from Port Harcourt, River State, South South Nigeria, in the person of Chioma is in Wafo. Uh, of course, um, her contribution is very apt as to uh, giving you a quick, uh, slight insight into what the future mm -hmm. might look for as far as um, uh, education, particularly for our children, uh, would look like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, it's still the conversation. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, as usual, at this one, <laughs> we'll be taking us through what's trending. Welcome back and moving on to what's trending today. Um, and of course, we all know what's trending today is the inauguration of President-elect of the United States, Joe Biden. He's going to be inaugurated into office today. And that has been a fact conversation all over social media. And although the, the inauguration is going to be turned down because of, you know, 
COVID-19, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in America, and also to avoid, you know, fracas as to what happened with um, at the Capitol Hill um, initially, you know, when the Trump wasn't going to, you know, let let go of office. And quite a number of tweets uh, here, quite a number of interesting tweets. I'm going to take the first one from Mandy1630. He says, tomorrow we will have President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. And I might be crying in my bed with a migraine. I'm just so excited. <laughs> That's interesting. And then um, Bob Perga 77 says, I see Joe Biden is capable of producing Obama. Tears on cue. And then under that, um, MMA Padelan re replied saying, Obama is the best president. Joe Biden will be our next best president. Quite a huge faith they have in, in Joe Biden. And this guy, man like I see, says, why do I feel Joe Biden's administration will favor Africans? And then he got a response saying, by the time the boys have finished their breakfast tomorrow morning, Joe Biden will be president. I'm rather looking forward to the occasion and his first hundred days and then the rest of his term. Um, a lot of people have quite a number of expectations for Joe Biden being president. And what do you think his first day in office would look like? Um, if I know Joe Biden very well, he's going to hit the ground running. Okay. He has already done that. Mm -hmm. uh, so his best, first day in office is, you know, trying to refamiliarize himself with the White House, mm -hmm. uh, see whatever changes Donald Trump has made, whether it's, it will work for him or not. And then, you know, of course, um, uh, sit down with Camilla and say, hey, look, I handle this, you do this, mm -hmm. and um, um, give themselves timelines and deadlines. That's what I think will happen. No time to breathe. No, no. Uh, he, <laughs> he, he, I mean, uh, Joe knows that there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. uh, America right now is going through, um, probably it's one of the worst periods it has ever mm -hmm. had in history. Mm -hmm. And there is need for uh, both he and Kamala to hit the ground running. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and pretty interesting things all over social media, as far as uh, the inauguration is concerned. Nigerians have Ashoy Bio. Ashoy Bio. <laughs> yes, that video is out there. You can check it out on our website, www.tostvnetwork.com. Uh, you get to watch the, the video. And even the video of the tanker explosion, mm -hmm. if you haven't seen it, it's on our website. So um, we'd like to, as always, to say, hey, become part of the family by joining our online community by simply liking and following TOS TV Network on all our social media handles, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And of course, like and follow our uh, YouTube channel as well. Don't forget, www.tostvnetwork.com. So that's the show this morning. I am Nkame John. And I am Adesua Osui. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow.